Hello, in today's video, I'm going to be comparing the Canon G7X Mark II to the Sony ZV-1. This one has gone viral. The Canon G7X Mark II has gone viral yet again, even though it's been years, it's going viral on TikTok, but it's going viral for photo, not for video, not for vlogging, camera, just for pictures. And a lot of people recently, in the recent like two years, have made the switch from this camera to the Sony ZV-1. I have both. Now, truthfully, I am not a camera expert. I'm not like a camera girly. I don't know that many things about cameras. And I was debating on making this video because I'm like, I'm not a camera channel. But I figured I might as well, you know, help the girlies out because a lot are debating on these two. And since I have them both and I've used them both, I might as well give my opinions on which one I think is worth it. So these are both of the years that both of these cameras have come out and these are their current prices. I'll try to look for like ballpark where they are in like Best Buy versus like Amazon and leave the prices right up here because I know that is obviously a huge factor in buying a camera is, you know, the price. And I'm going to be doing a side by side of what each camera looks like, you know, recording at the same exact time. But before that, I am going to compare what I think physically, like the physical characteristics of each camera before I get into any of that. I feel like a lot of people are, let me swap so you don't get confused because this is a Sony ZV-1 and this is a Canon. Do so next more too. So, um, I feel like a lot of people are quick to say this one is so much better than this one, but there are a lot of things that I like about the Canon that I don't like about the Sony. So first, let's just go off of a huge thing. The viewfinder on this one flips out um, to the side versus the Canon, it comes up like this. So when you're like recording anything, like if you're using this for the purposes of a vlogging camera, which is mainly what I'm gonna be like talking about is like the video aspect of this, not so much the photo taking, although I think that they're both good at taking pictures. I really do like the fact that the viewfinder is up on this one because if you're like speaking into the camera and you quickly like glance up at yourself, it still looks like you're looking into the lens on the Canon versus the Sony. Um, you'll kind of like catch yourself like looking like I've seen it in videos. I'm like looking off to the side into the viewfinder to see myself, um, which I don't really like. I feel like I want to look like I'm looking to the camera, like to you the entire time. And I'm filming this on my phone. I don't know if I already said that. I am filming this on my phone so that I can show. Um, I have the iPhone 13 and yeah, just for the sake of being able to show you both of the cameras at the same time. So yeah, so that's one thing that I don't like. There's a lot of things that I like physically about the Canon G7X Mark II that I don't like about the Sony ZV-1 and that is overall just the quality and feel of this camera. It feels kind of like a newer camera if I'm being honest. It has like this little like leathery, I don't really know what the material is. It's a little heavier and it has like more of like a leathery kind of like look to it. I'm filming this on my camera, so you might not on my phone, so you might not be able to see it all that well. But yeah, this is what the top of this one looks like. This is what the top of this one looks like. Um, yeah, buttons are pretty similar. The backs are pretty similar. So yeah, so this one, the Sony has more of like a plasticky feel to it. It is like kind of really lightweight, which is nice if you're gonna be, you know, vlogging with this, you know, when your hand to be, um, to get tired of holding this. So yeah, overall, um, this one is a lot lighter, but it just looks a little cheaper and it, it feels a little bit more plasticky, but I do like the fact that the Sony's viewfinder flips. So when you're not using it, you just have it in your bag, the camera is protected. Um, the Canon does not flip, so it's constantly just on the screen parts. The entire time. Oops, I accidentally turned it on. Another thing that I don't really like about the Sony that I do really like about the Canon is that when you turn it on, sometimes immediately when I turn it off, the camera goes back inside. And sometimes I notice it didn't do it just now, but sometimes when I um, shut off the ZV1, did I even just turn it on just now? Sometimes when I shut off the ZV1, um, it'll take like several business days 
for the camera to go back inside. So I really don't like that. It always makes me feel like there's something wrong with my camera. The fact that um, the lens doesn't go right back inside the second I turn it off as quickly as the Canon does. So that's just little literal nitpicky things. And then one last thing is that the mic, this, you can attach a mic to the Sony ZV-1. You cannot attach a mic. I mean, I think they figured out some complicated way for you to be able to use an external mic on the Canon G7X Mark II. So a lot of things about this camera, the fact that it only shoots in 1080p and not 4K, leads me to believe that this camera is really good for pictures. Oh, and that's another thing I forgot to mention. They have like, there's like this little cute flash thing that pops out for, you know, taking pictures like at night or in like crap light. Um, that has like a little camera that pops out. This one does not have that one. But that leads me to believe that this is more of a camera for pictures. So right now it's like um, trending again for the sake of being really good for pictures. And I honestly feel like that's what it was made for. I feel like years ago people were using this because it was um, obviously better quality than the iPhones that were out at the time. But honestly, I feel like I really do love the quality of this one better. So we're going to get into the side by side. Right off the bat, you can tell that both cameras are significantly better than my iPhone. I noticed that when recording, the Sony ZV-1 zooms in just a bit more than the Canon. Um, so I usually have to sit a little farther away when I'm filming my videos. Right here, I'm just testing the focus with like my Apple Pencil to show you how the automatic focuses. I'm not tapping on the screen for it to focus. I'm just seeing how it focuses automatically. And the Sony ZV-1 definitely wins by a landslide like look at the canon it's just not focusing gave it multiple multiple tries and it just wasn't focusing see the automatic like color difference like i'm using the automatic settings put in onto the camera i didn't modify or tweak anything for the saturation or any of that so this is automatically how the color looks on both videos Like I said, they are both significantly better than filming on the front camera of my iPhone, but now I'm going to go ahead and individually film with one just so you can hear the audio. Okay, so that wasn't any talking, so now I'm currently testing the mic on the Sony ZV-1. I currently have the little mic that it comes with, and I'm just talking and saying whatever. I'll do a little bit of ASMR for you. I'll like back up a little bit, see what I sound like a little further away from the camera. And I am able to buy a better mic if I really, really, really want to like amplify my sound quality. And so now I'm going to go ahead and talk with the built-in microphone, the built-in microphone that comes with the Sony, I mean with the Canon, the built-in mic that comes with the Canon. I'm gonna try now. Okay, so now I'm gonna currently talk into the mic that comes with the Canon G7X Mark II. Um, I'm looking washed out. Okay, this isn't about the looks though. Uh, so this is what I sound like. I'm gonna do the same thing as with the other one. And then I'm gonna, yikes. <laughs> I'm gonna back up a little bit and see what it sounds like from farther away. I truthfully never really paid that much attention like I should to the way that audio sounds on the Canon. So this is gonna be like a first like time I'm hearing this audio side by side. So yeah, so that's what I sound like on both of the like built-in mics and I'm, yeah. Okay, one thing I will say that it is Probably a nitpicky thing, but it definitely something that I noticed because I had this one since like 2019. So I've had this camera for years and that is that it feels more up to date. Like the screen is very touch. Like if I go to like the menu, I can touch the video to play it, navigate everything through touch aside from just um, touching for like viewfinding. Let me see. Like you see, I can like, navigate through the screens with my finger it's touch screen 
versus the Sony ZV-1. I don't know why, but the software on here just looks a bit outdated to me. Like if I go to their menu and I try to click on the same things, I can't, I can't do anything. Everything has to be done through the buttons and I don't like that. It feels kind of like outdated, just the way that it looks, even like the high icons on it, which is very minuscule and doesn't really affect the way that the camera itself makes pretty videos. But that's just something to keep in mind that and aside from like like tapping on a little square to maybe focus on something, the screen is not touch screen. So yeah. The thing to keep in mind is that the battery life on this one does last longer than it does on this one. So you really, really, really want might want to get a spare battery for this one because the battery does indeed die fast. I'm assuming that it has to do with the fact that it's shooting at a higher quality, maybe. Um, and that is why it dies so much faster. But yeah, battery life on the Canon G7X Mark II lasts longer. Honestly, this one feels like the more expensive camera and it looks like it too. And the uh, software on it seems to be a little more up to date. But the Sony ZV-1 just gives me better quality, better audio and better focus. And for that reason, I choose this one as the winner. I wanted to mention that both of them come with an app. So in order to, you know, get your videos out of your camera, if you want to immediately have them on your phone or you don't feel like plugging them up to a computer, they both have apps that you can get like your videos from. Like you have to like connect the cameras to your Wi-Fi and use like maybe like an access point. Both of the apps <laughs> that you have to download to get your footage from this camera that isn't used by attaching like the little cable suck except for the cat the canon i wasn't able to get my videos it would take a while but definitely the app that the sony has in order to obtain your footage is so extremely bad um i've had so many issues with it so many error messages and i'm in it i study computer science like i'm not stupid when it comes to technology and following instructions so yeah i would definitely say that the softwares that are built for both of these to obtain like your footage suck. So in order to get your footage easiest, I highly, highly, highly re recommend getting this. Actually, this isn't it, but I'll put a screenshot of what it is. And basically you take the memory card out of the camera, you put it in there, you plug it into your phone and instantly you go to files and your like footage is there. It is literally the best thing ever. So I highly recommend that if you wanna like get your photos like fastest i would say like to your phone um if not it's pretty easy to get them both onto your computer via just the cable so overall i would definitely get the sony zv1 versus the canon as you saw there was definitely some issues with focus which if you're using this as like your sit down camera and vlogging camera then literally the focus like holding something up to the camera with this one, it just takes too long. Honestly, like I said, I'm not a camera expert, but I think the Canon was more made for photos. I think the fact that it's heavier and like having some like a camera that's a bit heavier probably would help like weigh your hands down so they're not like all like shaky versus like if you're holding something light, the shakiness might show a little more. Uh, this one, I love the quality of this one better. It honestly like has a blurring effect for your face, which I feel like is so cool considering like we're used to like having some sort of filter on these days i really do like that um i like that i can attach a microphone i like the quality better i like the focus better and yeah i just like this one better i used to actually get frustrated with this camera while shooting videos but i am going to keep it for pictures so yeah i would definitely get this if your only concern is like taking pictures and i would really get this if you really want pictures and video so yeah, that's all I have for this video. That is my final verdict. Um, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a like. And yeah, best of luck on your journey. I hope you slay with whatever videos or pictures you take. Doesn't matter which one you get. Bye.